Hey guys! In this vlog, I will share with you my pageant book collection. Well, actually, it's not really a collection since I don't purposely buy books about pageants to collect them, but rather I buy them because they are interesting to read and I like looking at the photos in them. All the basic information you need to know about each book is posted in the description box below. If you're new to this channel, welcome! And if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button and the bell icon below to get instant notification for the next video. Let's start with this book, The Mishudiverse Beauty Book, You Can Be a Pageant Winner or Look Like One by Susan Duff, published in 1983 by Carrig McCann Incorporated in New York. The copy that I have uh, used to belong to a North Carolina Community College library, but it was discarded. It was discarded and I found it its way in a used bookshop where I found it. If you want to know what kind of beauty tips were popular back in the day, almost 40 years ago, this is the book for you. One of my favorite chapters in the book is the one entitled Dieting as a Beautiful Way of Life. And there's a section called The Miss Universe Miss USA Weight Loss Diets, which offers three different diets to match three different eating styles which a title holder can put to use when she needs to lose a few pounds or more. The three diets are the social butterfly diet to a super busy social schedule, the nibbler's diet for beauty queens who love to snack, and the Miss USA two-day protein and juice fast for a quick weight loss. Imagine if Alicia Machado had known about these diet tips, then she wouldn't have been labeled Miss Expanding Universe, and she probably would have campaigned for her ex-boss Donald Trump when he was running for president. 23 years later, in 2006, Miss Universe organization published a book called Universal Beauty, The Miss Universe Guide to Beauty by Kara Brinbaum. When the book first came out, I said to myself that I had to have a copy immediately, so I ordered one on Amazon, which arrived a week later. The book features former Miss Universe title holders ranging in age from 20-something to 70-something who share their tips for effortlessly looking good today and for decades to come. The book is beautifully designed and formatted. It contains amazingly glossy photographs by the great beauty and fashion photographer Fadil Barisha and, of course, beauty tips from past title holders. This is actually one of my favorite books. Producing Beauty Pageants, A Director's Guide by Anna Stanley, published in 1989. When I produced a Mr. USA pageant back in 2008, I relied heavily on this book written by Anna Stanley, who has been a pageant director since 1983. It has over 300 pages of great tips and resources that a pageant director would need in the production of a pageant. Tips that include setting up your own passion business, breaking into media, of course, this was before the internet and social media even existed, choosing prizes and awards, finding sponsors, recruiting and interviewing contestants, mentoring and training contestants, selecting judges, promoting your winner, and much more. A second edition of the book came out four years ago, and it has been updated with an even more extensive list of essential resources. So if you're thinking of producing a passion, this book is a must read. Under the Crown, 51 Stories of Courage, Determination, and the American Spirit by Katie Harmon, Miss America 2002, with the 2001 Miss America contestants, published in 2002 by Milestone Books. After the 9-11 terrorist attacks occurred, the officials of the Miss America organization decided to continue with the competition despite heavy opposition from critics. In the final months of her reign, Katie Harmon joined with all 50 state title holders of the 2001 Miss America pageant, which took place on September 22, 2001, to author and publish a joint memoir of their heartfelt experiences during the competition, as well as the incredible acts of service that they witnessed throughout post 9-11 America in the year following the competition. If you're looking for something inspirational and encouraging to read, this book is for you. I also have four books that make great coffee table books. You can place them on your coffee table, not only as a decoration, but as your comfort books that provide consolation, sentimental, or nostalgic value to you. I just cannot imagine doing away with these books, which means I will always keep them. Beauty Queen by Alyssa Stein, published in 2006 by Chronicle Books. 
This small hardcover edition celebrates the glory and glitz of pageants, large and small. It contains inside information on the history, the fashion, and what it takes to win the crown. I love the vintage photos and tidbits on bathing suits, tiaras, and more. This book was actually a gift from Donald West, the creator of the pageant side, Pageantopolis, and it's one of my favorite books. Thank you, Donald. Beauty Queens, A Playful History by Candace Savage, published in 1998 by Abbeville Press. The book traces the evolution of pageants from its early days to 1996. I love this book, which is in paperback because it contains so many vintage photographs of all sorts of pageants that I have never seen before, and the graphics are simply amazing. Pageant, The Beauty Contest by British author Keith Lovegrove, a glossy paperback published in 2002, which features a nostalgic trip through time with pageants such as Miss America and Miss USA, and including more unusual contests like Miss Car Wash in California, Miss Kansas Turnpike, Mr. America, and Miss Nude UK. It is attractively designed with French fold flaps, and it has 144 pages, and has the photo of Debbie Shelton, Miss USA 1970, in the back. Tiaras, Past and Present by Jeffrey Munn, a well-known jewelry historian. Even though this book, which was published in 2002, has nothing to do with pageants, I consider it as a pageant book anyway, because it is a book about tiaras and crowns, and you can't have a pageant without a tiara or crown to put on the winner's head, right? Besides, tiaras have always epitomized majesty, sophistication, and glamour, whether worn by a queen like Queen Elizabeth or a drag queen. Now, if you're looking for books on pageants with a more academic and scholarly bent, I recommend these two books. The first one is Beauty Queens on a Global Stage, published in 1996 by Rutledge. It is a collection of essays written by cultural critics who argue that beauty pageants transcend all cultures, that they, quote, impose control, mapping power onto the bodies of their participants by forcing beauty into a narrow and arbitrary mold. Pageants discussed include ones with strange titles like the Snake Charmer Queen in Sweetwater, Texas, La Cordobesa in Andalusia, Spain, the India Bonita of Monimbo, Nicaragua, the Gay Bantut Transvestite Pageant in Southern Philippines, the Maya Queen in Guatemala, Miss Hailala Pageant in Tonga, and much more. Another book is The Most Beautiful Girl in the World by Sarah Bennett Weiser, published in 1999 by the University of California Berkeley Press. This book discusses the age-old topic of beauty pageants and national identity with a focus on the Miss America pageant. The author moves beyond standard feminist rhetoric and argues that beauty pageants are sites of complex cultural work where ideas of race and nationalism often take center stage. One chapter is devoted to Vanessa Williams, the first black Miss America, who was later forced to resign 10 months to her reign after nude photographs of her taken in 1981 simulating sexual acts with a white woman were published in Penthouse Magazine. I actually have two copies of this book and I will give away the second copy when my channel hits 3,000 subscribers. Then I have two books in French. The first one entitled La Vérité, Tire du Chapeau, or Pulling the Truth Out of the Hat, written by Antoine de Villejoie, a pageant historian, which is the primary source for my article, Miss France Controversy, which I published on the Critical Beauty website back in 2012. See link in the description box. The book offers an enormous amount of documentation that proves who the real creator and organizer of the Miss France pageant is. And it's not her. The second one is entitled L'Histoire Secrète des Miss France, or The Secret History of Miss France Winners, written by Xavier de Fontenay, the son of Geneviève de Fontenay, where he shares his thoughts and experiences with former Miss France title holders that he had known and worked with. The book is actually a gift from a Canadian friend of mine with whom I have been corresponding for years, although we have never met in person. The book has over 350 pages of interesting 
and eye-opening stories and tons of photos in black and white and in color. So if you read French and if you're looking for a good pageant book to read during your leisure time, I recommend this book. And lastly, years ago, I stumbled upon a book written in Finnish about the first Miss Universe. Arne Kiselo is from Finland and her life with Virgilio Hilario, a wealthy Filipino businessman. As some of you know, less than a year after being crowned, Army chose to give up her Mishidovers crown on May 4th, 1953 to marry Virgilio in Tokyo after a whirlwind courtship. The book was published in 1954. I don't read Finnish, I don't speak Finnish, I don't understand Finnish, so I really don't know what the book is all about. But with the help of Google Translate, the title of the book in Finnish translates into English as Yli kaikkien rajojen. Yli kaikkien rajojen. Yli kaikkien rajojen. Anyway, I don't think I'll ever be able to read the entire book because I don't have time to learn Finnish. However, I do love looking at the many vintage photos which I have never seen before. So I think I'm keeping this book forever. And there you have it, my pageant book collection. It's not a big one, but big enough to satisfy my emotional, intellectual, and psychological craving for pageantry. What about you guys? What pageant books do you have? Does my collection match yours? Comment below. Thank you for watching, guys. Until the next time. Bye!